The South Korean government says it'll provide 1.6 million houses to newlyweds and young people by the year 2022 as part of its plans to improve the livelihoods of the people. Our Oh Soo Young reports. The government plans to provide more state-funded homes to support hundreds of thousands of young families, specifying its social housing roadmap released last year. Under the updated plan, 880,000 newlywed couples will have access to public housing schemes, subsidies and lower interest rates on loans to help them find their first home. These include 250,000 council homes provided at rent prices up to 80% below the market average, as well as 100,000 homes built in special zones customised for newlyweds. The government also aims to build 100 new childcare centres within public housing grounds and will install facilities for child safety. 60,000 single parents with children under the age of six and low-income families will also be eligible to all these schemes. We've added 13 new public housing areas. When we procure 20 more locations by the end of this year, 43 so-called newlywed towns will be created in various spots throughout the country. This comes as the country grapples with a chronically low birth rate and a waning preference for marriage among the younger generation. A survey shows around 46% of young adults believe marriage and childbirth is not necessary. Also, 46% have cited housing and the cost of marriage as the reason they're hesitant to tie the knot. To tackle the root of the problem, the government also plans to boost housing and income stability for adults aged between 19 and 39. This includes providing 270,000 council homes and dormitories for 60,000 college students, as well as financial schemes for housing. They'll also be able to apply for office spaces at discounted rates. Some 750,000 youth will be eligible for these programmes, nearly 200,000 more than in last year's roadmap. The Land Ministry aims to implement these measures from this year through 2022 as part of its broader housing welfare roadmap worth $106 billion. Addressing concerns that the expanded support would cost an extra $15 billion, a ministry official said extra costs would be covered by excess funds without causing a big strain on government budget. Oh Young, Arirang News.